In Creole Parametric, you can use a slot follower connection to simulate the motion of a component along a predefined path. And common uses that I have for slot follower connections include the movement of latches. So for example, if you think of the bolt action in certain kinds of rifles, and also the installation and removal of different components. A lot of times I'll use a slot follower connection to simulate that. In an earlier video, I used a planar connection with a motor to simulate the motion of a tank across a field. But tanks almost never drive in a straight line. They used to fo they usually follow a curved path in order to make less of a target for themselves. And so that's what I want to do here. I want to change the motion to follow the curve that you see on the screen. So let's start off by closing out of the animation, and I'm going to close out of mechanism mode. They asked me if I want to save my results. I'm not going to save them. And let's go back to this component. I'm going to edit definition of the tank to change its constraints. Before I do that though, I want to move it all the way to the back here. So let me go to my placement tab, and I'm going to adjust the value here for where it's located in there. Just get it more towards the start over here. And in addition to this planar connection, I'm going to add my additional slot follower connection. The reason that I'm retaining the planar connection is that your slot follower connection does nothing to control the orientation of your component relative to the rest of the model. So if I just had a slot follower connection, that my tank could end up rotating around that curve as it's moving along. The planar connection will keep it, as the name implies, planar to this surface. To create my new connection, I will click on New Set. And right now it wants me to create another planar connection. That's not what I want. So I'm going to go to the drop down list of the different constraints. And the one right down at the bottom is Slot. I will pick that. And for your references, you're going to pick a point on the component that's capable of moving, and you're going to pick a curve in your assembly. So for my component, I'm going to display it in its own separate window. Oh, it's giving me a message about my model tree configuration file. And I have some different datum points in here, and I have a point located at the rear that I'm going to use. And then for the assembly item, I'm going to select my curve. And now I have my connection definition complete. That's all that I need on here in order to define it. Let's hit the check mark. And I'm going to turn off my point display. In my imported geometry, there are a bunch of points and they're cluttering up the screen. Now let's go over to mechanism mode in order to define our motor. I'll go to Applications, Mechanism, and create a new motor. I'll just use the servo motors icon in here. I'll open up the References tab, and this is going to be a slot motor. And for a slot motor, all I have to do is select my slot connection, and it adds it in here. Now let's go to the Profile Details. For this one, I like to drive the velocity. And for the velocity, let's use a value of 160 inches per second. That is good. Let's go to the Properties tab, and I'm going to call this my Slot Motor. And then hit the check mark. That way I can keep track of the various different motors that I have in my model. Let's go to our analyses. Here's my original forward motion analysis. I will click on Analyses in the Mechanism tree and then click New to create a new kinematic analysis. And I'm going to rename this one to my, uh, all caps for some reason, uh, Follow Curve Motion for the name of the analysis. I'm going to go to the drop down list for the type and change to kinematic because I prefer to use the true kinematic solver. Now, I can't remember how long that I want this to run, but I think I want it to run for more like 40 seconds uh, for the frame rate. I like to kick that up a bit. 
and now I'll go to the motors tab and right now it lists all the different motors in here but I don't want to use all the motors I've got my turret traverse I still want to use that one here's my slot motor that I just created but I don't want to use the forward motion one so I will select it and then this icon allows me to delete the highlighted row so now I just have the two motors that I want that is good let me go back to the preferences tab and for starting it instead of using the initial configuration I actually have a snapshot that I can use that uh, has the component located on there actually let's just use current for this one I'll use the snapshot later on I'll actually show you how to define a snapshot so let's test this let's hit the run button and now you can see how it is moving along the curve but you'll notice that it is still keeping its orientation with the tank facing the front so this isn't exactly realistic in terms of how I want it to move so right now I can see that is almost completing the motion I think I actually want this to be a little longer let's try 48 seconds didn't get close enough to the end of the curve that I wanted so for now let's click OK out of here and I'm gonna go back to standard mode let's close actually I don't have to go back I think I can just select on the component and then edit definition and so let's go back to the placement tab I want to move it back to the front so I'm going to go to the translation axis and change this back to a value of say 2700 or so and let's go to this slot connection let me move it so that it is actually going to be there and so I've got my first slot follower connection in order to get it to move so it is sort of like staying normal to the curve as it's going on along here I'm going to add in a second slot follower connection so let's go to the new set and I'll select my point online connection and this time I will make sure both collectors are active for my component item let's turn on our datum point display again this time I am going to pick the point right off the screen I have another datum point in my model located at the front and then I'll select the curve and that way now I've got both of my point on curve uh, connections created in my model that's good let me just yeah, make sure it's over on there let's hit the check mark to complete it and now I've got my two connections for my slot follower on there let's go uh, right now I'm still in applications mode before I do anything though as you add additional connections in here and create your different motors the icons can start up cluttering up the computer screen so if you don't want to see them you can go to the mechanism display icon and right now I can say hey let's not display the different joints in the model let's not display the slots and let's also turn off the servo motors while I'm at it let's click the OK button and then expand analyses here is the follow curve motion I'm going to edit definition and there we have it along the curve there uh, here I said that I was going to use a snapshot so everything in here is good so far but let's go to the OK tab or excuse me the OK button for now I'm gonna go to drag component and I can select the component here and just position it at the beginning of the curve already have a snapshot if I want to create a different snapshot I'll create it and then maybe I'll call this the start slot let's spell slot correctly hit the enter key so it takes the new name of the snapshot let's close out of here now I can edit definition of the analysis that I just created let's change this to use that snapshot that I just created and that is good let me position my model now we'll try running it and yes I will overwrite the previous results and now you can see that by having the two slot follower connections I'm getting my tank to follow the curve more like how it would move in real life as opposed to always staying facing towards the front of the battlefield There, it is completed running. 
I can click the OK button out of here. Now I'll go to my playbacks. Here is the playback for this one and hit the play button. And let's crank up the speed, move the dialog box a little out of the way, hit the play button. And that way we can see it moving over and over again. As always, you can click the capture button if you want to generate a movie of this. And you also have the ability to render the frames. But I'm not going to do that. Let's just hit the play button and watch the motion of this beautiful tank. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.